The film opens in 1917, taking us to a small village in China called Yunnan. Here, we meet Liu Jingxi, a humble man who supports his family as a papermaker. Liu lives with his wife, Yu, and their two sons, Fangsheng and Taoshan. Each day, Liu toils diligently to provide for his loved ones. One fateful day, while Liu is at the local grocery store, two menacing men enter, demanding all the money from the shop owner. When the owner refuses, the robbers subject him and his wife to cruel mistreatment. Initially terrified, Liu hides, hoping to evade the robber's wrath. However, witnessing the horrifying assault on the shop owner and his wife ignites a fiery determination within Liu. With newfound courage, he pushes one of the robbers to the ground. Though Liu does not display significant resistance and mainly evades the attackers, the robbers suffer grave injuries and meet their untimely demise. The shocking event causes a stir among the villagers, who deem Liu's victory a stroke of luck. But Detective Xu Beiju, assigned to investigate the case, harbors doubts. During an autopsy, Beiju discovers that one of the deceased bandits is Yan Dongsheng, a notorious criminal on the government's most wanted list. While the local magistrate and villagers celebrate Liu as a hero, Beiju remains skeptical. How could Liu, seemingly an ordinary man, accidentally overcome such formidable adversaries? Beiju meticulously examines Yan Dongxin's body and notices telltale signs of a brain hemorrhage resulting from a nerve injury. He surmises that Liu is not an ordinary man hiding his true skills, especially considering this crucial evidence. To unravel the truth, Beiju sets out to gather information about Liu from the villagers. Concurrently, he grapples with the pain inflicted by poison, using acupuncture needles at specific points to alleviate its effects on his body. To validate his suspicions, Beiju seeks Liu's permission to observe his daily routines. As Beiju carefully watches, he uncovers compelling evidence that Liu is far from ordinary. Liu exhibits extraordinary breathing techniques, allowing him to efficiently manage his breath. Furthermore, Beiju witnesses Liu's remarkable ability to lighten his body, preventing him from plunging into the river. However, upon realizing that he is being observed, Liu pretends to fall into the river, and the attentive villagers promptly rush to his aid. In a heartfelt conversation, Liu confides in Beiju, revealing a haunting truth from his past. Ten years ago, he was compelled by his father to commit a murder at the family's slaughterhouse. This heinous act led to years of imprisonment. After his release, Liu vowed to transform his life for the better. Despite Liu's repentance, Beiju remained skeptical, believing that one's character cannot change so drastically. Moreover, Beiju senses a formidable presence of Kai energy within Liu, a power possessed only by martial arts experts of the highest caliber. Driven by his determination, Beiju seeks the assistance of a police officer friend to delve into a murder case that unfolded at a slaughterhouse a decade ago. Recalling their joint investigation, Beiju's friend informs him about the gruesome massacre of the abattoir owner's entire family at that time. Digging deeper, Beiju uncovers a startling revelation. Liu, the man he has been scrutinizing, is not who he claims to be. Liu is, in fact, Tang Long, the notorious second-in-command of the ruthless and bloodthirsty group of assassins known as the 72 Daemons. Upon discovering Liu's true identity as Tang Long, a fugitive wanted by the police, Beiju hastily returns to the police station. He urgently seeks the judge's intervention, aiming to secure an arrest warrant for Tang Long. However, to his dismay, most of the judges delay the issuance of the warrants, citing a lack of evidence. Shockingly, one judge openly demands bribes from Beiju in exchange for the warrant. Frustrated by the bureaucratic obstacles, Beiju decides to persistently monitor Liu within his village while awaiting the judge's response. Unbeknownst to Beiju, the judge who had shamelessly solicited a bribe earlier reports Tang Long's whereabouts to the master of the 72 demons, hoping to receive a reward. Enraged by the judge's disrespectful remarks about Tang Long, the master reveals a startling truth. The fugitive Liu is, in fact, his own son. In a fit of anger, the master swiftly eliminates the treacherous judge. Seizing the opportunity, the master dispatches his loyal minions to Yunnan village with a twofold mission. Capture Tang Long and lay waste to the entire village. 
Meanwhile, Beiju, en route to Yunnan village, remains unaware of the impending danger. Two of the master's henchmen manage to infiltrate the village, imploring Liu to disclose his true identity. However, despite the pressure, Liu remains steadfast and refuses to disclose his true identity. In a desperate attempt to force him to reveal the truth, one of the master's henchmen, known as the Madam, mercilessly takes the life of a villager. As she prepares to kill another innocent citizen, Liu intervenes and, at last, unveils his hidden persona as a formidable warrior. He engages in a fierce battle against the two henchmen, astonishing the entire village. The transformation of the once innocent Liu into a skilled fighter capable of vanquishing one of the notorious 72 demons leaves Yu, his wife, utterly speechless. After successfully eliminating one of the 72 demons' henchmen, Liu leads the madam away to engage in combat elsewhere. Their confrontation takes place within the confines of a buffalo pen, where their duel intensifies. The clash is fierce, but ultimately, Liu manages to overpower the madam, causing her to be trampled and teetering on the edge of a treacherous river. In a moment of compassion, Liu attempts to save her, but the madam defiantly reveals that he is still Tang Long, before plunging to her demise. Overwhelmed with guilt, Liu returns to his home, burdened by the weight of concealing his true identity from his family and the villagers. Liu then divulges a pivotal incident that forever altered the course of his life. During one of his ruthless acts at the abattoir, he encountered a severely wounded child who looked at him, tears streaming down their face. This poignant moment awakened his conscience, compelling him to renounce his life as a merciless killer and embark on a journey to become a better person. Shortly after, Beiju arrives accompanied by a police officer, delivering alarming news to Liu. The 72 demons plan to lay waste to Yunnan village and apprehend Liu. In order to ensure the safety of everyone, including Liu's wife and children, an evacuation becomes necessary. However, Beiju, now developing a sense of sympathy towards Liu and convinced of his genuine transformation, decides to remain in the village. Leveraging his knowledge of physiology and acupuncture, Beiju devises a plan to stage Liu's death. Unfortunately, the timing constraints give them only 15 minutes to make Liu appear deceased, leaving Beiju with no choice but to revive him promptly. Unexpectedly, the minions of the master who arrived earlier than anticipated, witness Liu being revived in front of their eyes. In a daring move, Liu boldly severs his own left arm and declares that he severs all ties with the 72 demons. Accepting Liu's proclamation, the 72 demons believe him to be dead and consider him no longer a part of their group. However, the challenges are far from over. A member of the 72 demons discloses to Liu that he must personally meet with the master who awaits him at his residence. Upon reaching home, Liu is devastated to find that the master has taken his family hostage. The master presents Liu with a chilling ultimatum. He will release Liu from the clutches of the 72 demons only if Liu carries out a heartbreaking task, killing his own son, Xiaoxian. Consumed by rage, Liu launches a fierce attack on the master, undeterred by the fact that he has only one hand. The battle between the two unfolds with intensity, each strike from Liu's sword failing to land a blow on the master. The master, with his immense Kai energy, skillfully employs Qigong to shield himself from the sharp weapon. Meanwhile, Beiju, closely observing their confrontation, stealthily enters Liu's house through a concealed hole to provide assistance. From beneath the floor, Beiju strategically inserts acupuncture needles into the master's heels, severing crucial nerves and weakening his defenses. However, the master quickly realizes Beiju's intervention and swiftly retaliates, launching an attack against him. Although Beiju suffers a fatal blow to his chest, he manages to retaliate by piercing acupuncture needles into the master's neck, severing additional nerves. Consequently, the master's defenses continue to falter. The relentless duel between Liu and the master ensues amidst a torrential downpour and resounding thunder. As Liu finds himself on the brink of defeat and the master prepares to deliver a fatal blow, Beiju seizes a final opportunity. With a precise motion, he plunges a needle into the master's neck, transforming it into a lightning rod. 
A powerful bolt of lightning strikes, engulfing the master's body and ultimately ending his life. In the aftermath, Beiju proclaims the case closed, succumbing to his wounds and drawing his final breath. Liu's family is finally liberated and reunited, allowing them to return home. Liu, free from the clutches of his dark past, resumes a peaceful and ordinary life with his beloved wife and children. The moral of the story is be true to yourself and don't hide who you really are because pretending to be someone else can bring unexpected trouble and twists in life, just like lightning striking when you least expect it. Embrace your uniqueness and let your true color shine.